Greetings, dear friends. We come with joy and strength, linked together with love in our group circle, celebrating the energies of Gemini and energies of Christ, streaming to humanity at this high point of the festival of Gemini. We continue our creative lab, rhythmic work, where we together invoke the souls of our nations. And with gratitude to the Hekal group from Jerusalem and Klan Shali group from Germany, I invite Uta to lead us in this work. Thank you, Alexander. And hello, everyone. It's a special privilege to come together again, and at this time in the light of Gemini, in the love of Gemini. And Gemini gives us the opportunity to explore reality from the angle of relationships. So this will be our main theme today. As world events are shaking up all of our structures on all levels, we observe all this, this high tension in the structure of our own inner life and in our family, and all these complex structures in all sectors of human endeavor. Huge tension, huge disintegration everywhere. So we were thinking that structure, what is structure? It's actually a set of solidified relationships. It seems that now, at the end of this age, it's the glue that holds together things and people. It's this glue which is actually dissolving. It's like this glue, Pisces glue, this quality, this impulse underlying the structure of our world seems to be expiring. So it's on us. We have this awful and awesome opportunity now to create the new glue, the glue of the, of the new age with which then to relate people and things in a new way. So we need a new vision, Aquarian vision, and a higher level of love and care. I would, would like to repeat this sentence from DK from last webinar. Move on apace. See truly with the opened eye of inner vision, with the heart resting in the center. So yes, we are called to have a fresh look through the cracks and to give our trust to our heart at this point to make this new step. And um, our relationship and our endeavors will be shifting onto this new bottom line if we want that they will succeed and they will last. And this new bottom line is the common good. It's like the common good is becoming now our new set of criteria for relationships. Only that which benefits the whole will make the mark. 
So that means that we need to examine all our existing relations and kind of upgrade them according to these new criteria. And also, we already feel this urge to, to let go, to relinquish any, any affiliation with people and organizations or projects which do not match this, this criterion of the common good. And we see many, many experience of a new togetherness underway, also in our esoteric community. <clears throat> Our different groups can serve us as laboratories for trying out a new mode of togetherness, more authentic, more transparent, more daring, more accepting of each other. Trying out a new intimacy in which we will feel safe, safe enough, so we, yeah, we can dare to, to share what is really on our heart and what is really on our mind without fear of being judged. And in this way, to experience a higher order of relationship. And our, our various conferences and intergroup events can become conscious opportunities to learn to, to, to handle our differentness in constructive ways. As uh, Asajoli says, to transform conflict into creative tension. And so we can make our small contribution manifest on our small scale what the family of nations needs to learn now. And we had a bit of a taste of it, I think, last month in our last meeting when we had the snapshot of Russia. I think we could all feel the tension which we are called to hold together, to learn, to handle together um, and come into into a um, yeah, higher communication, um, a wider cooperation across cultural divides. So in all this, the capacity to hold space plays a central role, as we are now already focusing several times in several webinars on this. It's holding space on all levels. So today we have another opportunity to do this. It's a second race skill. And uh, today, as our focus is on Great Britain, with its second ray Gemini soul, this will probably color our meeting. So this is following the snapshots of the USA and Russia. So this British snapshot will complete our focus on the triangle of nations. Maybe we'll get into it a bit more later on. So for now, let us prepare for the snapshot by doing a brief alignment. And then after the snapshot, we will hold space meditatively for Britain and for our world. And as we now go into this meditation, we, um, we can perhaps connect in our consciousness with the Lucis Trust in London, which is at the moment holding uh, its uh, full moon meditation of Gemini.
Okay, so let us breathe. And touch base with our inner stillness. Feel our spine as our central axis. And let now our whole being arrange itself around this central axis. Get the sense of the physical body aligning around the spine, relaxed and upright. and the emotional body and the mental body. And we stand as the soul and we hold like a magnet all our personality components in right relation. Let's strengthen our connection with the earth below. And the heavens above. Setting our intent now on serving our nation. We imagine ourselves standing on a pinnacle overlooking our nation, standing at the midway point between our nation's personality and its soul. Perceiving each other now, each on our respective pinnacles. Sensing and affirming the inner unity of purpose, which we all hold and which all world workers in each nation hold. It's one united inner movement working out through the different outer groups in the different nations. Threads of light and love and intent connect us from pinnacle to pinnacle. Sensing for another moment this field, this field of creative tension that we are holding together, planetary field. And sense or imagine the quality of right relation gradually coming about in it each one of us finding our place and our relation with all others until we together hold a sense of stable harmony.
and embodying this stable harmony and anchoring it on our pinnacle. So to speak, pinning into place an international subjective web of stable harmony into which then more relations may be woven in geometric order. Let us sense our higher co-workers standing with us, holding this web of higher relations higher order of relations with us. Let us hold this high vibration throughout the session as we now turn our attention to Great Britain, holding space for the snapshot. over to the British contingent. Hello, uh, Jill here. Rosita, did you want to say anything? Just come in now if you do. I'll carry on then and we'll see how it goes. Um, I will start with a glimpse of the physical land of Britain. Imagine that we are taking a flight over the countryside of England. We see a gentle and very green mosaic of fields and small rural settlements with occasional woodlands and soft rolling hills. To the north, there is a quite different country, Scotland, which we learn is called a nation in itself and may become independent one day. Here we see a rain and storm soaked landscape of dramatic jagged mountains and beautiful locks or lakes as we usually refer to them. There is much wilderness of great beauty and emptiness here. Flying south and west we cross into Wales, also a nation in its own right, with villages and wild mountains and a beautiful coastline facing out into the Irish Sea. Going out over the sea further west, we come to the fourth nation contained in the whole, which is Northern Ireland. Questions arise about its place in Britain, which we learn comes from a long troubled history of British dominance and occupation in past times, leaving a small enclave that identifies totally with Britain, just in the north. Back in the sweep of the landscape of Britain, we see it punctuated by several great cities, principally London, the capital in the southeast, sitting on the Thames River that flows through it from far in the west and out to sea in the east. With keen sight, we can detect the beautiful, detect beautiful gardens in the countryside that may surround historic mansions, but also abound in small backyards or busy garden centres. We would start to understand that gardens and the beauty of nature are a passion for the British people. We might see groups of sturdy walkers out there, no matter what the weather is doing, and glimpse in particular some energetic hill walkers in the Lake District, in England's northwest corner. A place of poetry and beauty unparalleled, we learn, and visited by people from all over the world. Flying south over this group of several small nations within one, devolved but still subject to the Westminster government in London, we learn that each have their own secondary language and a growing pride and nationalism that has risen in each one in recent years. We wonder if this great island nation will fracture at some point and pray for unity to hold. 
As we peer down, we get a sense of how very ancient this land is and discern in places many mysterious ancient monuments, stone circles, and if we are lucky, crop circles in the grain fields. We can almost feel the deep penetration of history into an ancient and unknown past and wonder how it influences the present times. We gaze out towards close neighbouring countries, but we do not see strong threads of connection there. However, we know that this land beneath us carries the bones of European and Scandinavian ancestors who fought here, settled here and helped unite this country into one, mingling their blood with ancient native inhabitants of that time. Of course, we may have seen nothing at all on our flight as the country can be covered by a grey blanket of cloud forms at any moment. When it dissipates, extraordinary blue skies are revealed, which have inspired English artists like Constable and Turner to celebrate them. This gentle land we have crossed is named the British Isles, the United Kingdom, or just Britain. It is tiny on the face of the map and has dared over centuries to step into world dom dominance, to project its might into the whole planet. And we find this fierce and determined will quite extraordinary. That was the physical glimpse. And now I will go on to a glimpse of Britain's astral life. What are the dreams and de desires floating around the United Kingdom these days? The country has become part of a global world and looks outward, but internally it is recovering from both Brexit and the pandemic, which have shaken up the status quo. Many feel distressed by long COVID or the shakiness of the government, which makes the country feel like no one is steering the ship. There is an instability and fragility about these times. A deeper issue is unseen, the shift taking place between the old dependable world and something that is not understood in the psyche, which we might see as the call of the Aquarian age. The upper classes in Britain did not traditionally believe in emotional expression, and this was called having a stiff upper lip not so long ago encouraging only good manners and politeness in conversation. This British reserve means a person you meet may talk about the weather rather than be personally revealing. In the lower classes, there was a different spirit where solidarity in the face of hardship created expressions of understanding and neighborliness. Today, you still hear in shops a total stranger calling you love or darling and other endearments which express the spirit. Two great events in relatively recent times broke through British Reserve and changed the mood of the country. One was when the Beatles, working class youngsters from the remote north who spoke with regional accents, dared to become famous. They burst out with a new kind of music that spoke to and about ordinary people. After this, music itself became a vehicle for the expression of emotion, particularly among young men. This music reached out into the world and developed as a kind of folk poetry, particularly among the young. It now expresses the passion of anger as well as social criticism and the eternal yearning for love. Another big shift came when Princess Diana died. Royal family scandals appear to appeal to people as a kind of soap opera or sitcom that shows the royals as real people and not remote. Those who find them undignified want the monarchy out, of course. Princess Diana endeared herself to people in her troubles and called herself the Queen of Hearts in her longing to connect with those suffering as she did. Something amazing seemed to happen at this time. The huge national outpouring of grief over her death is said to have opened the heart in Britain, which has never closed since. A recognition of emotional life has progressed from here. 
The words mental health have entered the nation's vocabulary to address depression, anxiety, and self-harming among children. The rise of domestic abuse and increasing murders of both women and children. A crisis now looms with food and energy poverty in the country, amongst a well of insurmountable social problems. These things must be solved with the growth of the heart, as well as an understanding of psychology that is not natural in the culture. Inter interestingly, certain folk heroes like footballers, who can now be very wealthy and influential, have stepped in with compassion to make sure children are fed. There are also many charitable, hardworking groups like food banks who step in when governments seem not to care. They carry a compassion within them that those in charge appear not to have. What we see is that popular culture is growing strong as the old world fades and it opens the country to realize dreams and claim powers that were suppressed or non-existent earlier. The prevailing mood often seems to be anger and frustration resulting in the many protests. Also, in a country where grey weather permeates, there can, be naturally, there can naturally be a tendency to gloom and a lack of hope. These states are thankfully counterbalanced by much humour and mockery in the culture. Not cruel, but mocking all sacred cows relentlessly. No one is exempt. The current Prime Minister, for instance, being called Bozo the Clown by the press. This lightens the mood of the country and reminds people of our virtues of kindness, generosity and solidarity with the poor and vulnerable, which are the virtues of ordinary people. While rebellion and anger fuel protests, there is also a lightheartedness that overrides all self-importance and expresses a unitary heart quality in the nation. That is the end of the astral life. And I go on to a glimpse of Britain's mental life. The mental life of Britain has been built on the influence of our ancient and historic universities of Oxford and Cambridge, and by expensive private schools traditionally set up for the upper classes. Here men were trained for rulership, both at home and abroad. This class of elite people is challenged nowadays and to come from such a background is almost considered a disqualification for high office. Education itself, and really every other institution in Britain, appears to be struggling between what has been traditional, noble and dependable, and the impulse of new disruptive energies. In universities, freedom of speech, for instance, is being challenged with tensions arising from culture wars and the woke philosophy which takes on racial prejudice and discrimination. In schools, government policy is to focus entirely on STEM subjects at the expense of the arts and humanities, which are often being eliminated. STEM means science, technology, engineering and maths and this fifth ray influence is very striking. It remains to be seen where it will lead the country. The popular spotlight is now on marginalised and disadvantaged sections of the community whose lower status is being radically resisted. Movements among the people are rising as government is seen to lack the fresh political thinking needed. Britain still wants to follow its first ray dominance on the world stage, but can seem to be falling on the home front where there are needs for the caring spirit of the second ray as we go into crisis now about rising food and energy costs. Against this reality comes the floods of refugees from multiple countries who arrive in smugglers' boats, pursuing their dream of a promised land. The government struggles to address this problem. The wider population seems neutral to the migrant question, neither for nor against, 
except for those from Ukraine who are always warmly welcomed. New thinking about our relationship to other countries is now focused on the harm and violence the country has done in the name of colonialism and the slave trade from the past. This ties into the assertion of black people's equality and visibility within the nation. This new movement involves toppling the statues of past heroes, who were also slave traders, as well as questions of how to teach children about colonial history now, when in the past it was a source of pride. The Commonwealth of Nations, born out of past colonies that became liberated but keep our monarch as their head of state, is much associated with the crown and the royal family whose responsibility it is. There has recently been a resolve among some Commonwealth countries that have not yet achieved independence to do so. The community at home probably relates most to the Commonwealth through the games. It is the almost revolutionary mind we have now. The Commonwealth may well be seen to be the result of disreputable colonial acquisitions in the past. As Britain retreated into Brexit, it maintained the special relationship of its ties to America. But our country has recently cut foreign aid to poor, poorer countries in a kind of withdrawal. It is more inward turned seeking to stabilize the shifting population in this country and our own economic viability. Europe is still loved and enjoyed by many as if Brexit never happened. Other countries impinge on the national consciousness through the vibrant multicultural communities within Britain and in our schools where all nations seem to be represented. The strange thing is that Europeans, our cousins, have gone, but many Southeast Asians and peoples from poorer developing countries are resident and legally British now. Perhaps this ultimately brings something fresh, being outside the ingrown European family. That is the mental life. And now a glimpse of the soul of this nation. The evolution of Christianity and the exploration of kingship, its practice and purpose, have both gone hand in hand throughout the country's history. Christianity is now focused in the state-run Anglican Church, whose head is the Queen and is rapidly losing in importance, leaving us an atheist, atheistic or agnostic country, apart from certain devout Muslim groups. The state church does, however, serve in ceremonial rituals involving the royal family in Westminster Abbey. The lack of religiousness demonstrates on the whole how the sixth ray is passing. An exception is Northern Ireland, which has had violent clashes between Catholic and Protestant sectors of the population fairly recently, but they are at peace now. The twists and turns of kingship have led to a royal family that persists while many European countries have let go of their monarchies. The royal family has only ceremonial power in a government led by its dominant first ray, but it does have spiritual power in that demonstrates strongly the key words, I serve. The queen, her husband and her heir, Prince Charles, have devoted their lives to service. A deep part of this nation's purpose, and this is public, which is a deep part of this nation's purpose, and this is public, publicly realized in the national press. The Queen is much loved by many, and celebrating 70 years of her service to the country has been a focus for national celebration, gratitude, and unity. The second ray focused in such a symbolic monarchy, which generates colourful and popular rituals and pageantry, can help keep balance as we move from the sixth ray influence and from the Piscean to the Aquarian age. Although the religious impulse is now in the background, 
There are strong new age centers like the Feintorn Foundation and the deeply esoteric groups begun here in earlier times that are still thriving, such as the Lucis Trust and Theosophy, which although perhaps not great in numbers, do provide a core of truth to carry the nation forward. We can also see how the third and second rays are active nowadays in the small victories of daily life which show changes of the heart. For instance, the following new shoots are getting stronger. A lot of people are now more prepared to speak up against corruption and lying. Many are now interested in climate change and attempting to take measures to combat it. People are taking more interest in growing their own vegetables. Animals are receiving more justice from courts when abused. More people are taking care of their health by exercise and diet. We are openly supporting an oppressed country, Ukraine. Religious leaders have become more cooperative with each other. These are positive changes like the small flowers that grow through the soil in spring and they will all flourish and grow. It is important to mention London, among the most powerful cities in the world, which is a vibrant international and open-minded place drawing the world to it. The stated goal and practice for London is to be an international centre of finance and this global stature, stature is positive but has inevitably brought in elements of corruption and misuse. London is also the centre of government, the place where Britain demonstrates its will and power. The worn out decay of the old physical structure of the Houses of Parliament building in these days seems to symbolise the passing of an old order, however, which will be repa repaired in time. The great gifts of the past that Britain gave to the world endure, such as parliamentary democracy and the rule of law, the mixed blessing of industrialization, and certainly the common English language that unites people worldwide. The expression of language in the arts has been very strong in this country, from Shakespeare to the great poets and novelists. Other gifts given through example have been of fair play, tolerance, great statemanship and democracy at work because the interplay between government and the people is so active and strong. Britain may have taken much from the world through colonial greed and selfishness, but it has also given much to wider world development in both fact and philosophy. The Commonwealth of Nations shows the world how dominance, dominance and cruelty towards, weak, towards weaker nations in time became transformed into brotherhood, support and celebration. As we move into the Aquarian age, such qualities can grow and inform all our relationships in the wider world. London is becoming a centre of light as its many meditate meditation and esoteric groups grow strong. The monarchy may survive through Prince William and Kate, who are popular and showing a will to modernize the royal family. Even if it doesn't survive, the quality of seventh ray ritual will remain in some modernized form. As the first and second rays learn to work hand in hand, it will bring the union of love and will. In conclusion, the force of spirit in modern Britain draws on its ancient past in a continuity. The worship of the sun in stone temples, Celtic crosses, crosses dotting the countryside, the pilgrimage route to the holy island of Iona, and the legend of King Arthur and the Holy Grail associated with the town of Glastonbury are all still alive in the consciousness of the nation. We are still seeking the Holy Grail. That is the presentation. Thank you.
Thank you, Jillian. Let's take a moment of silence to let these impressions settle in us. Standing with the British National Unit on their pinnacle, let us sense the quality in the field between Britain's personality and soul. Taking a moment for this. Visualize Britain's soul energy pouring forth onto the Isles. And now pouring forth further into the nations of the Commonwealth, into its whole field of influence. Staying with it for a moment, sensing the vibration of this field of influence, the quality of this vast field. And as we continue to hold this field with its quality in our awareness, let us also become aware of another point in the Triangle of Nations, the United States of America. See if we can hold both. Visualizing the soul energy of the USA pouring forth into its outer expression. And 
pouring out further into its whole field of influence. Sense the vibration of this field of influence. And now see if we can add the third point of the triangle, Russia. Visualizing Russia's soul pouring forth its energy into its outer expression. Pouring it forth further into its whole field of influence. Trying to get a sense of this vibration, the vibration of this field of influence, of Russia. Now let us visualize the energy between these three vast fields starting to flow freely, dissolving all impediments, gradually coming into right relation, each finding their place and function And visualizing all nations now slowly coming into this field of right relation. Each one taking its place and function in the whole. And we hold for another moment the vision of a higher order of relations coming about on our planet.
Okay. As the frogs seem to have started already our sharing. Don't know if you can hear them. Um, anyway, let us start sharing our impressions. Hello. 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 Oh, you can hear me. Um, I think it's interesting that Britain um, had very strong focus on kingship, and the first ray brought this kingship energy to the fore. But actually, it has been the mother country to many smaller nations, um, helping them to grow and develop and called in my own home nation of Australia called always the mother country. So there's this mothering aspect to balance the dominant father energy. Thank you, Rosita. Rosita, can you say a few words about your group? Yes, we are, we are three people, a very small group. Um, uh, two live south of London and one further to the northeast of London. We have not met, and but we stay in very close contact by emails um, and we we have a, a symbol that we work with we formed a triangle that we use in our meditations in the morning and we have a symbol for Britain which is the ancient oak tree and traditionally this has been associated with honor nobility and wisdom and it's considered a national symbol of strength. Thanks. Thank you very much for that beautiful, heartful snapshot of Great Britain. It was wonderful. And like Rosita, I just wanted to add that what I felt was that it was more of a grandmother energy. And when we were focused on that triangular circulation between these three countries, it was almost as if the United States in their adolescent behavior and their adolescent energy is is almost more willing right now to sort of look with love and devotion, look with love behind itself to the grandmother that is the beloved sort of degree of separation that isn't quite the mother that has a little bit more of a maybe of a, of a, a tighter grip on the rain, but that loving grandmother, that ancient wisdom that they that, that, that they relate to in that sort of energy. And then with Russia, it was more of a little girl energy that was sort of watching carefully and watching the big sister of the United States. And in a sense, longing to come out and play, longing to, to, to be with her in some ways and in the same sense sort of that disconnect from a grandmother that they might not really know very well so it was this lovely feminine energy that, that was so helpful in, in this meditation thank you 
that is embodied in the queen for us because she is the grandmotherly age and acts as a kind of grandmother for the country, um, which is a, a beautiful role she's played, but it may not last. One other observation, um, I grew up with a, this competitive spirit between America and Russia, the Cold War, and this competition, energy of competition isn't there in Britain, I've never experienced it really. Um, it may be against Russia at times, but it's really just aligning with America in that, I think. Um, it doesn't have that kind of competitive aspect in its personality. I would like to share gratitude for that really beautiful snapshot. It, it was so, it was really comprehensive. And I have lived in Britain, um, in the Cotswolds, uh, and have such a, a, a reverence for the ancient um, nature of, of the land, the countryside, which seems imbued with, yes, that very, very ancient uh, spirituality that really is unbroken in its energy. Um, and the, the, the history, you mentioned the, you know, King Arthur, but the, the grail, the, um, the, the, alchemy, the, the magic of, um, of, of the land and the soul is, is so profound. And I really feel that at that level is where it connects energetically to Russia because the depth of spirit embedded in Russia and Russian soul, the, the uh, brilliance of the seventh ray, uh, again, magical. And, and as it was circulating, um, it, it sort of circulated around between, you know, when we were looking at the uh, radiation of the British Empire, which of course extends to India, <clears throat> but also the profound relationship of Russia and the East. And it, it's great, Russia's great um, occultists, you know, the Rorics and, and Blavatsky spent so much time in India and the Himalayas and the uh, Trans-Himalayan tradition that somehow there was such a profound synthesis between Britain and Russia at that level and also spiritually uh, in that element of the United States that had the deep embedding of the Masonic and the Rosicrucian uh, um, underpinnings of of its formation so uh, that's where i saw the synthesis between the three very profound debra thank you Thank <laughs> you. 
Margot asks uh, for all of us to say our name when we speak. Um, perhaps also our country would be good. Galahue from the United States, and uh, I too appreciate uh, greatly the beautiful snapshot of the Ukraine. And what came to my attention was the loving ways in which the speakers of all three nations spoke about their land and how unified all of us are to and maybe helped to understand the dilemmas and the stresses that each of our nations are now dealing with um, that have to do with the environment I'm going to, my own experience has helps me to see the environment as a deeply feminine. Uh, and to the extent that the governance systems that all of our countries are dealing with, uh, not having built in that feminine principle with the beauty of its land. So it may be that as, as we continue this conversation that we may have another go round with our mm -hmm. various countries that include its literature and its music um, and to continue to identify what it is that we share in this time that is equally stressful to us all and recognize that the pillars that uh, our future, our Aquarian future will be based upon have so much to do with our cultural evolutions. And I do want to thank all of the organizers for creating this contemplation. You're helping us to get to know one another and to um, work in some ways with our own personalities to bring soul to this conversation. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Martha, gratitude for your observation. Yeah, we are learning to hold space for each other, for each other's nations. And the care that is being invested in these snapshots is really a gift. It's really giving us the opportunity to get to know each other's nations in a more intimate way and uh, through the eyes of, of uh, spiritual students, which means, as you say, we are bringing soul, soul perspective into this getting to know each other and each other's nations. And also this observation of the land, the love of the land, the magic of the land, being like a complement to what we are now used to, how to get to know somebody, some some nation through the govern, government, through the politics. The male and the feminine complement find this very inspiring to think through. Thank you.
Hi, this is Efrat from Jerusalem. Thank you for this really beautiful and, and rich snapshot. And uh, it was very interesting interest for me, but uh, although it's, it's far away, it's, it's been uh, more than 70 years already, but uh, Britain was ruled Israel, which was Palestine. So mm -hmm. we had the uh, kind of uh, our angle uh, looking at the British uh, culture and it really was very open-minded for me uh, to look from from the inside uh, the British uh, nation. And, and you brought so beautifully that uh, in all levels, from the uh, really nature and countryside. And I loved it when you mentioned the Beatles. Thank you. Could I ask Jonathan to say something about the astrology in Britain? Jonathan? Oh, yeah. Yes, hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, yes, thank you so much. It's such a beautiful uh, snapshot for the British nation. Just a few thoughts came to me, really, uh, primarily from, from DK. I was struck by the, uh, the first significant point that the three nations, Great Britain, the USA and Russia, together provide or represent the three major divine aspects brought into manifestation or in potential. Great Britain, right human government, will or power, United States, right human relations, love, wisdom, and in Russia, the right use of the mind, intelligence. So there is a, if you will, there's a sense of a trinity there as their federated relationships move forward into Aquarius. But of course, it's said that these three nations hold humanity in their hands. Um, I felt very much that uh, when um, Jill expressed the, you know, as the first and the second rays of the, of the nation of Britain learn to work hand in hand, it will bring about the union of love and will. There seems to be a point to keep in mind. Um, we looked at the, apparently the three great world problems being worked out by the three nations. I'll highlight it for Britain. In Great Britain, the problem of socialism is being resolved and the sound judgment of the people will eventually balance the two conditions of a socialist program and free enterprise. This needs doing for the extreme position in either case is untenable. 
And as Riz, uh, Rosita, uh, Rosita shared earlier, capitalism in Britain and elsewhere really is failing the people. And indeed, the social value, the context of the people is most needed. And we, had, we looked at an observation of how this balance between capitalism or free enterprise and socialism for the people, by the people, if you will, might be achieved. And in a sense, a seed thought could be offered here, that free enterprise serves community. And thus, the keynote of Britain, I serve to kind of complete that circle. Free enterprise serves community. Really, it's very simple. Germany transmits Ray 2, the only sign that does, as was mentioned, the ray of divine order or pure reason, love, wisdom. So this full moon certainly provides such a, a wonderful opportunity that can bring about a new recognition to the awakening soul, a ray of wholeness trending towards a new synthesis, perhaps, of those essential, quite simple pairs of opposites, trending towards a new synthesis with new vision and purpose. This can be our hope. Thank you. Thank you for that, Jonathan. And I would like to add just a few quick thoughts about that. Um, that the need for the transformation or even transfiguration of that um, apparent duality of free enterprise and socialism, I think both need to be reframed uh, because they have old connotations clinging to them like seaweed. Um, but that if we look at the concept of free enterprise as being the freedom of each individual to pursue their unique line of service, their enterprise is service of some kind, whether it's in the arts or economics or horticulture or science, doesn't matter, but that each is free to blossom um, individually and collectively, and that socialism is reframed as simply a commitment to the common good of not only humanity, but all kingdoms in nature then we can get out of the forms that these have crystallized into, such as mega corporations, monopolies, competitive entities that are really not human, uh, and, and go back to the source of what is innately human and divine. Okay, it is Denise from Russia. Can I speak? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you to the speaker for such an interesting talk about Britain. As I want to say that I, uh, it was uh, a new energies of Britain that I discovered for myself. Thank you. My mind was uh, floating uh, uh, through uh, British expanse and serenity, tranquility, and majesty.
Uh, thank you to Uta and the STAR group for another webinar that helps open up our international consciousness. But uh, now I want to say about uh, Triangle of Nations, uh, such mentioned so many times today. Uh, and uh, uh, today we summarize the the theme, uh, this topic, and uh, uh, we touch it uh, on in our meditation. And someone I uh, I remember shared with this, with uh, her impressions about this, and uh, uh, I just can agree with it, with them, and but. You know, now completing the three spiritual festivals, I I would like to say a few words about the triangle. After all, uh, it is certainly important for us to subject subjectively energize it. But, uh, just a moment, Denise. Oh, just a moment. Yes. Um, Alexander, could you put on the, the slide with the Triangle of Nations, please, as oh. Denise is talking? Yes, it would be. Thank you. Fine, fine. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, yes, and... Uh, um, uh, except subjectively and energizing, I think that uh, it is uh, equally important for us to realize with our minds what a wrong shape this triangle has taken today. Really, it turns out that today, more than ever, uh, it is far from being workable. Today, two nations have turned against one nation and are at war with it. And we should probably get to the bottom of this. Why is this happening? Is Russia really that bad? Or it is something else? Our dear speaker today, when talking about Britain, mentioned Ukraine twice with warmth and support. Ukraine was called an oppressed country today. But who oppressed it? Russia, Britain, or maybe the United States? You are probably sure that it is Russia. But what if it is absolutely not? What if I told you that Ukraine is not at all what you think it is? I really want the great triangle of nations to work again, the way it worked during the World War II on the basis of the friendship of nations. It seems to me that in order to do this, we need to disengage from what the Western media is telling us. To understand that today there is a net centric hybrid war against Russia. And the basis of this war is the information component. We just need to see different points of view. So to see the picture of, of the world from the other side. What I have told you already and uh, about it and not long ago, I wrote a book about Russia's present, past and future and its relationship to the West. In it, I tried to co convey the picture of the world as it is seen from Russia. Basically, this book is a light historical narrative and reflection on the meaning of certain events. From it, 
you can understand that Russia is not at all what it used to be considered in the West. Unfortunately, so far the book is not is only translated, but uh, it's translated by a machine translator. It's called Deeple. It's a good translator, but it is still needs editing. So far, we have not find, found an editor, so there are still technical difficulties with translation, puzzlesness, and most importantly, many links to various sites which the translator has not translated into English. Anyway, I hope that we will overcome all the obstacles, find an editor, and get the book right. Uh, maybe someone would like to help it. But right now, you can already read it in the cloud, and the link I will give in the chat. In the same folder, there is a file with the text of the last snapshot about Russia. And there is also somewhat emotional open letter to Ukrainians, which I wrote back in March. Please, if you have any questions or suggestions, send me an email, which I will also mention in the chat. If you don't manage to write it down, Uta also has my coordinates. I truly believe that when esoterics of all the earth can look at international relations with love, detachment, and dispassion. Using with love also mental distinction and common selves, then the great triangle of nations will shine with dazzling and irresistible beauty. Thank you. Thank you all. I'll just put the links and my post in the chat. Thank you, Denise. Let's just take a moment to breathe and to take all this in. To be with our emotions for a bit. There's obviously a lot of work still ahead of us. Um, so I, this is Martha from the United States. <clears throat> I would like to uh, lift out a point that Dennis made about how we all have been shaped by our, our, our press. I think for most of us, it's not, it, 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 the social media represents a further extension of that. But I am so aware of the journey that all of us had to cut through the biases that we have received from our families and our histories, especially as we go into this new time. I am also aware that we, as three countries together, will have a better uh, ability to see our, we will be able to create a vision of the future 
based upon the experiences that we have had in our own countries and ownership of what we have uh, in one century assumed was correct and in another century realized it was not correct at all. So it's a very good opportunity for us to be together and not need to agree with one another too quickly, but to go back and to rethink our, the source of our own assumptions in order to be better prepared to help each other create a vision for the future. I would like just to add one more point that there is a Millennium Declaration that was drafted through uh, at the time at the UN at the time of Kofi Annan's secretary at, and what he attempted to do in that declaration is to identify 10 principles that all countries needed to um, develop, to, to pursue, to grasp, to shape policy upon and so forth. And the general, then he put the document before the General Assembly and the General Assembly approved by consensus all of the principles except for one. That one principle was the principle of violence. And I often think we are well served to construct better futures by looking at what was missing. And it may be that we'll come to a better common ground when we work to deconstruct our patterns of violence and find the better way, beginning with our own countries and sorting out what is the better way. And as we do that, to then be able to share what what have we what are we learning that represents the better way and i also want to support and to thank dennis for being reminded about our um, patterns of speech that tend to target others and to learn to rethink how to better express what we are meaning to say as we construct this better future. Thank you. Thank you for that, Martha. That that's such a good context because I think we could probably all come to consensus right now, uh, maybe that our current uh, governments uh, that are the public-facing entities for each nation do not uh, fully represent the soul of, of each of our nations. And, and as esotericists, we are endeavoring to bring in the soul energy of our own nation and, uh, and, in, and in the relationship of this triangle. Uh, starting starting at soul levels, I think uh, each of these three nations is going through a radical deconstruction 
currently um, of the old patterns and the old patterns still remain in place as the public facing uh, uh, representation of the nation. And yet the pressure of the soul of the people in each nation is often at odds with their own current governance. And I know that struggle is huge right now in this country. Um, I know it's a big deal in Great Britain. And I, I will ask Dennis if, um, if that is the case in Russia um, as well, that, you know, the, 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 the will of the people um, and, the, and the soul of the people, is it being represented to the soul's satisfaction in each of our nations? And that's where a lot of our work begins, is to um, apply the pressures that are needed in each of our respective countries to address the enormous um, distortions of, um, of our governments. Um, at least I can speak for the US, you know, it's uh, a huge conflict raging to express anything like the soul of our nation uh, in terms of outer manifestations that are going on. So I would invite that perception as well, because it's very clear that we are not getting accurate information uh, about one another. And so it's difficult to have then a relationship in, in the context of the three lower worlds, uh, the personality realms, uh, because there's so much churning going on. So I, I would love to hear, you know, um, people's perspective on, on that struggle. Um, thank you, Deborah. I am aware of the time. Um, so I think we don't have time to continue this very vital, very important contemplation together, reflection together. Um, I hope we can continue it maybe next webinar or in, in email. Um, yeah, we're getting into deeper reflection with each other. It's very heartening. Also, what Denise said that uh, um, the British snapshot uh, gave him a new, a new energy to 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 perceive of Britain. So this is what it is all about: to get to know each other. And as Martha was saying, um, yeah, we need each other to see and to come up with a with an inclusive vision. So I'm sorry that I have to cut this now um, because I want to say a few more things. First of all, um, gratitude to the uh, US group uh, of Jonathan and Lirata and Deborah for this piercing, penetrating work on the three nations that they have held over the uh, over this period of the last three new moons and for this beautiful evocative and invocative uh, uh, diagram that we're seeing. Um, this cooperation is really very fruitful. 
I would just want to uh, two more things. Uh, last week we had a presentation in the Lucis Trust uh, Triangles webinar of our nation's lab and there was a very strong interest from people in this national work. So it's, it is becoming more and more vital now to do this collective work, to learn this together. Um, so in our next webinar in cancer, we will go back to look at our own nation. And uh, towards this, we would like to encourage all our participants who are not yet part of uh, of national group, perhaps to form a new group. And uh, we, we will be ready to help you get started. And there are in fact two uh, people, one from Spain and one from South Africa, who would like to uh, start a group. They both cannot be on the call today but they asked me to uh, put their names, their contacts in the chat, which I will do in a moment. It's one is Leone from South Africa. She would like to start a group and would love to have people join her uh, about South Africa. And Maite Gomez from Spain would like to start a group for the soul of Spain. And uh, if there are any other people who would like to start a group, please say so in the chat or, or now, if, uh, if you can do it shortly, briefly. And if not, then write me an email. Um, yeah, so I think this is what I, what I wanted to say. Thank you, Uta. There are a few more raised hands. I'm not sure if it's people want to express their interests in to form a group or anything else. We have five more minutes, so should I unmute ah, someone? Ah, okay. Yes, please, please. If There's we have a new time. name. Uh, oh, someone just had the name, uh, their hand up, and then that. Okay, Shriya. So I will unmute Shriya. Hi. Um, it is my first time joining, so that was extremely interesting. And um, I am from Canada. So I would like to join, um, if there is a Canadian group that's already ongoing, I would like to be a part of that. It's just, I don't know how to reach out and what are the procedures. Perhaps you can share your uh, email address in the chat. Okay. Let me try doing that, thank you. Great, Shreya. And uh, I just unmuted John Alexis. John Alexis, if you can unmute yourself. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, um, another extraordinary uh, presentation uh, and uh, very grateful. Uh, when I was uh, 17, I was in London, August of 63, and I still have a 45 of I want to hold your hand. And uh, I read The Marriage of Heaven and Hell when I was 16 and still haven't recovered from it by, by Blake. Um, uh, thank you very much for what you said, Dennis, and I'm hoping I'll have an opportunity to follow that link and read your book. And I was really appreciative of the presentation that was made last time uh, by Russia, especially as someone you know with a Russian mother and has spent some time there. But I must say, as, as we did the, uh, I'm so grateful that we're doing this because an enormous amount of reinforcement is needed in terms of this triangle on the soul level and soul relationship of the nations. And it was apparent to me, especially with the United States and with 
Russia, and perhaps to a lesser degree with the United Kingdom, that uh, there, there, there is such, what do I want to call it, uh, an attack on the soul of the nation, the respective nations, Russia and the United States, coming from within. Uh, and there's such a level of shadow going on there, and what I can only refer to is, is mind virus that, uh, that has taken over even otherwise very you know, intelligent, uh, spiritual uh, uh, people that we really, this isn't going to be resolved on the mental level. It's not going to be resolved by exchanging ideas. So I'm very, very grateful that we're doing this on the day of safeguarding for Gemini because uh, with this kind of transition going and all the old going out and the new coming in, we're really needing to call in those higher aspects of love, which are more along the lines of a, of a living fire, what the Tibetan Buddhists refer to as the, the wrathful deities, that our God is a living fire, that uh, uh, love isn't just nicey-nicey, but it's a fire that burns out anything that is other than love itself. And I think uh, it's clear with some of the issues we're having, both within the U.S. and within Russia and between uh, 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 some of these countries, that it's not going to be worked out by talking and ideas, uh, although that's very interesting and helpful. It's going to be worked out on, on another level of love. And I, I use part of this as my mantra every day, but uh, there's a place in, I think it's, yeah, it's in Rule 11 in the group initiation that the Tibetan says that true group relationships are not based upon personality or impersonality or upon liking or disliking or upon criticism or non-criticism but upon a real comprehension of divine indifference spiritual detachment and deep persistent and unchanging love and there's something about that that's the note that's going to move us as a group because this triangle of destiny is certainly, you know, cr crumbling from within and under attack, both within the respective nations and between them. So uh, with, with great gratefulness for all of this, I, I, I really, you know, having listened again and now my second time participating, I, I want to sound that note of, of this higher inclusive love that's going to take us, you know, even out of the higher mental level, you know, in, into, into the, the Buddhic, uh, realms and really it was it was so powerful to me when we were you know I say reinforcing the soul level and soul relationships in this triangle and it, it, it's focusing on that that's I really really going to pull us through so having said that I'm, I'm I feel the need to sound this note uh, and uh, share my gratitude to uh, to Alexander for you know, blundering me into this 20 minutes before it started last month, but to really sound that note of of, of, of the higher loving, loving that's going to take us uh, beyond even the, the mental levels of, of discourse. So, mm, thank you. Thank you, John Alexis. Lots to ponder. I see that uh, the the details of Denise is not available to everybody. I don't know, Alexander, if anything can be done yes. about this. Um, yes, sorry, I didn't repost them yet because I was busy interpreting everything that's been spoken. So I will repost uh -huh. uh, uh, now uh, what Dennis, the links that Dennis put it in the chat. So there are several links that uh, uh, Dennis uh, shared. So just give me a few seconds, mm -hmm. and they will appear in the chat, visible for everyone. Huh. Okay, so now you, uh, there is email that uh, that you how you can reach out to Dennis, and there is a link to Google Drive. Uh, I believe it, uh, the one that Dennis mentioned where his book is and uh, um, uh, other materials. Where is this? I don't see this. It's in the chat. In the chat. Um, 
I see in Alton's gmail.com. Oh, oh, there it is. Yes, that's, that, 